In this video we'll talk about the, the challenges that confront family businesses. Family businesses face many pressures and challenges from within the business, the internal ones, and also from outside the business, the external. So family businesses have two parts, but you could say this of, of all businesses. There are internal issues in all businesses as well as an external environment within which the business operates. But family businesses have slightly different issues. The issues are slightly more complex because they're mixing family relationships with business relationships and that makes family businesses more complex, more difficult to operate. There may be consensus within the family at one stage but perhaps as time moves on there may be issues that would not confront another business. Family issues which are brought into the business and become a business issue in terms of the continuity of the business, succession, all sorts of issues which perhaps would not have plagued um, other small businesses. Let's see how it, how it works out and let's um, talk about these issues in more detail. Well some writers have talked about the pressures and interests of family business and there's a framework set up uh, by Hodgetts and uh, Kuratko. Uh, Kuratko and Hodgetts are quite famous writers in this area and their their work is very well respected so we'll have a look at their model. Family business owners must deal with business pressures that exist inside and outside of the business and we'll see the model in, in the next couple of slides but as I said earlier and it's worth reiterating that um, most businesses if not all businesses have internal issues and external issues that must be addressed organizational issues on the inside HRM issues training recruitment all sorts of issues on the inside but also an external environment caused by the competitive environment uh, innovation technical change all the external pressures but small businesses have this extra dimension the dimension of the family and that's what makes it different and we'll see how this works out in the coming just coming slides <coughs> so let's look at inside the family and inside the business so we'll have um, uh, some notes and we'll classify them as inside the family these apply to issues inside the family and also inside the business so let's see how it works well the family managers now they're inside the family and they're also inside the business. Um, they may be hanging on um, hanging on to or getting hold of company control. So there may be tensions about who exactly from within the family runs the business. And then there's the issue of selecting family members as managers. This may cause royal, uh, uh, rivalry within the family. Uh, they're looking to see who's been appointed as a manager within the business and how important that role is within the business. So there may be jealousy within the family. There's also an issue about the continuity of investment and involvement. Some members of the family might want to pull back from the business. Others might want to get more involved. So there may be a fragmentation going on within the family a dispute within the family about whether the business should be there, or whether it should continue or whether it should be closed. And then there's this idea of building a dynasty. Now this, this dynasty is, um, it could be one member of the family who has been successful perhaps as the CEO of the business, but he would want to hand on the business perhaps to one of his children. Well, this may also cause rivalry within the family. Others may think that it's no longer his or her turn 
to manage the business perhaps it should be handed to another member of the family not necessarily to his descendants so you can see just from this one little set of notes there are all sorts of issues that affect the family and affect the business so they're inside the family and also inside the business but there are also ones which are inside the business but outside the family for example the employees now the employees are have rewards for loyalty uh, sharing equity growth and success the employees are expected to be professional they expect to step in and help bridge family transitions when when one member of the family is leaving another member is joining the employees act as continuity uh, training advising recommending and the employees may have a stake in the business they may have been given a stake in the business by the family because of their loyalty over the years so it's inside the business all related to the business but it's outside of the family this relates to employees then we have inside the family but outside the business so here we have the relatives now it's outside of the business but the relatives will look for an income and an inheritance there will be family conflicts and alliances uh, some members of the family would si will side with others and others will oppose them and uh, the family may fragment in this way and also there may be issues about the degree of involvement in the business some people may think that they're working hard for the business and others are not so there may be issues within the family conflicts within the family as to who's making the biggest contribution and why should they all perhaps get the same remuneration or the same rewards so it's inside the family but it's outside the business but it still needs to be taken into account then finally we have outside the family and outside the business well here resides the environment this is where competition is the market the product supply and technological influences tax law regulatory agencies and trends in management so it's outside of the family and it's outside of the business but nonetheless it's relevant it needs to be taken into account so this slide has got quite a lot on it about how we can view the involvement of the family in business and what issues they confront it's a very useful slide and it's well worth uh, stopping the video and making some notes of this one in addition to internal and external business pressures family uh, business must also confront the following challenges legal succession issues who's going to take over when someone retires if a senior member of the business who's a member of the family is about to retire then who should it be handed on to now we've partly mentioned this before the creation of a dynasty and perhaps that person who's about to retire will want to see one of his children or her children taking over but other members of the family may object so there could be an issue within the family as to who succeeds when the retirement takes place also there are survival issues survival of the business and as I said the business is subject to more scrutiny and more issues and perhaps more conflict than generally the case in small businesses and that makes family businesses slightly more vulnerable but the need to survive and to survive the need to perhaps reinvest some of the profits and that in itself could be disputed by members of the family who don't see that as important 
or who don't agree with the way in which the profits are being invested. Then there's the strategy and the structure. The structure of the business, uh, who's in charge, how is it organized? Is it a flat structure? Is it a toll structure? Um, how is the business configured? And who holds what positions? And what strategy should it pursue? Should it go for developing the product and introducing new techniques and innovating? Or should it remain a family business, a traditional business, serving a particular product that perhaps the company has always worked on? And there are many small family businesses who pride themselves in supplying the same product year in, year out and they can date this back to their great-grandparents or whatever, dated back a hundred years, and they're very proud of this. Other companies may want to innovate and change and bring in new products. So what is the strategy and how can consensus be derived within the family to support that strategy? Well, the legal su uh, succession issues first. Well, nepotism is a growing concern and has impacted on employment practices within family business. Nepotism is handing on from one person to his or her immediate children, onto his, ch onto his or her children. So it, it's passing it down, uh, down the line. But as I said, other members of the family may feel that's very unfair because it is a family business. So there are problems there that need to be addressed and sometimes unfortunately this could damage the business or even end the business. Nepotism is the practice of favouring relatives and granting them jobs, higher level positions within the business over non-related employees. And that is the again a big problem in small businesses that are family based they're drawing from the family but the family are not necessarily the most expert in the production of the particular product the family may not have the skills or the foresight that perhaps other members of the workforce have the, the non-family members of the workforce can see the issues more clearly but they don't have a chance of being involved they're excluded because they're not members of the family. But if the business is to survive, it needs their input, not the family's input. The family may be not capable of running a modern business. This is a disadvantage for capable employees. They are limited in terms of opportunities for promotion and progression within the family business and it may lead to capable employees leaving which will reduce productivity, reduce the performance of the business, it will lead to more costs because of recruitment, uh, it will disrupt production. Um, the best people will not stay because they don't see a place for them, they have no opportunity to climb the managerial ladder it's been blocked off by family members who, who may not be as capable as non-family workers or staff. The legal issue can have major consequences for a family business. The business can be sued by employees based on ethnic, uh, ethic, um, ethnic, I should say, origin, not ethic, ethnic. Uh, not being treated as the same as a son or daughter. So business can be sued because um, perhaps it could be seen as discrimination. Uh, certainly a lot of people will not be given the opportunity to advance themselves in the business. It's a family business. So they may feel that they are uh, not being valued or even worse, they're being discriminated against. 
There are laws in place to protect employee rights, um, equality, equal opportunities and diversity. Family businesses will need to accommodate this issue as an external pressure. So the law of the land does apply and family members will have to accommodate that and will have to look to it and make sure that they are abiding by the law. But there are real issues about the succession in family businesses. Now survival issues. Well, survival is reliant on successful um, succession planning in family businesses. If the succession is successful, then the business may survive. But the person who heads the business will have to be strong enough to make the case with the family that there has to be reinvestment, there has to be development, there has to be innovation, change, um, modern techniques will have to be adopted. and So it's unlikely that a business as constructed perhaps a hundred years earlier is going to survive in the modern world. If carried out inappropriately this can result in business failures, loss of profits and investment. So if the, the person who is heading the business doesn't explain it properly and if the company doesn't get the investment it needs because the family want the profits rather than the business then it could lead to the demise of the business. So what is succession? Well, planning for transfer of ownership to the next generation. For example, transfer of business from father to son. But in family businesses, it may not go from father to son. It may go from uh, one person to his or her brother or sister. Uh, it may go from one person to a nephew or a niece further along. The family should ideally select the right person for the job, not in terms of family seniority. Planning for succession is an important process and should be carried out with minimal impact on the business. Ideally, the succession issue should just be it should be smooth but as I said family businesses have got this extra problem that they are not just dealing with um, uh, a change of management they're dealing with issues within the family as well most family businesses do not account for succession planning now that's an empirical statement um, but ha having said that, it does seem to be the case, just from looking at even small samples of um, family businesses, that they don't seem to um, plan for succession in, in a, a very efficient manner. And that's why many small family businesses have gone. And they've been replaced by more traditional small businesses small medium sized businesses. Um, it's complex the succession planning issue and it's likely that if it's not handled, hand, handled well the business will go uh, out, of, out of business, it will cease to trade. So it could be that too busy on developing the business, owners do not take uh, any plans for their exit. So succession planning may not be factored in because perhaps there's a person in working in the business who's in charge of business and has been there for many years and is working on some project within the business and doesn't want to contemplate leaving. And that may be blocking someone else who's got even better ideas. Um, it's certainly blocking the non-family members who have absolutely no chance of aspiring to that position. But it may be blocking members within the family who are better suited to a more modern way of working. Business owners and members do not have confidence 
in whoever will be taken over. For example, relatives, offspring, next generation. It's almost inevitable that when the successor has been appointed and takes over, there will be members of the family who will feel disappointed and jealous and rejected by the whole process and will not be supportive of that person. Again, putting pressure on the business as a, a major distraction when the business should be focusing on its product, its market, its customer needs, on its employees, on investment and development. Um, it has to think about what the family are thinking about the business. So it's a distraction. It's vital uh, businesses make plans for succession to avoid any unexpected situations. For example, death and retirement. Now retirement could be expected, but death, that can just happen. And if there's no succession planning being put in place, should it happen that the the head of the company dies, then the family will have to deal with the issues of, of funeral and looking after the family, but also the business is now without a leader. There's nobody been appointed. It hasn't been thought about. And that makes the business very vulnerable. These issues must be factored into the succession planning process. It's important that succession planning is seen as as important. It's, it's important because there needs to be succession, there needs to be smooth transfer moving from one to the next. If organizations have planned for succession this will enable a smooth transition between uh, ownership in the event of death and, and retirement. But as I said, many will not have done so. And many, perhaps within family businesses, will not have done so because they don't want to create issues and problems within the family in trying to pick a successor um, when they think, well, it's unnecessary at the moment, the person in charge is doing a good job and and seems to be working hard in the business. So why appoint a successor? Uh, why have problems within the family? But that's only putting off an even bigger problem should something unfortunate happen, uh, like the person in charge of the business dies. So it's it's a big issue. Now strategy and structure. Well succession planning can be difficult and an emotional process and is um, a complete transfer of ownership, ethics, values, culture and tradition. So succession planning is transferring almost everything. The ownership of the business, the values of the business, the culture, the tradition, and the person taking over may have new ideas. Some of the ideas may be untested and some of them may be quite radical, which may make the business more vulnerable if it's not well positioned within the market, doesn't have a, a good reputation in the proposed areas of development. So succession planning if it's going to be smooth the person taking over should have a similar view of the business and perhaps slightly different and will adjust the business over time will not go in with very radically different views and change it very quickly because that would mean that the business perhaps will alienate its customers, destroy its image and its reputation very fast. At this stage it's important to have a clear strategy and direction the business aims to move uh, towards or move, um, move in that direction. Now it's important to have this strategy because 
the strategy is long run and part of the long run strategy should include succession planning so that uh, everything has been worked out where the business is going and also who is going to run the business who is going to be the CEO of the business and who are going to occupy the, the senior positions within the business so it's important that the the strategy statement incorporates this information there are two strategies a family business can adopt business expansion or a family of companies now business expansion means taking the existing business and growing it but sometimes because of issues within the family uh, disputes, arguments, uh, disagreements um, it may be easier to try and hive off parts of the business into new business and give them away to different members of the family so it may be that the original business will not grow it will just simply divide and continue to divide until people within the, the family all have their share they have their share in terms of um, new businesses which have been derived from the original business it may not be a very economic way of uh, developing uh, it might be a quite a dangerous way in terms of the continuance of the business and perhaps business expansion one single business expanding may be a more appropriate approach but it does happen business expansion first well requires a succession process in search um, for the next leadership team or the owner or the management structure so to have business uh, expansion requires someone to to come in and with leadership qualities to lead the the business and who will set up um, a structure a management structure within the business which will enable the business to grow having said that that may preclude a lot of members of the family and as I said that may lead to jealousy and family disputes and and issues within the family that are not very pleasant the family of companies well to grow the family of companies some prefer to separate the business into branches which are run by different family members well that's an accommodation to the family but as I said earlier it may not be economic it may not be the most efficient way of operating that's the source we used throughout um, one we can continue to refer back to uh, it's an important topic the family business uh, issues uh, it's one well worth noting and taking time over go back over the notes read them up and look at some of the other material on the course but it's um, it's an issue that needs to be clearly understood and it all really comes down to the fact that small businesses have issues internal and external family businesses have issues internal and external but family businesses also have this extra problem about accommodating the desires and wishes of the family and some of these can lead to issues involving succession planning or the lack of it and therefore is a danger to the business so family businesses experience more problems than small businesses Uh, that concludes all we're going to do on this one so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching